Hey, what's up everyone? Greg here with 18 new changes on the new Watch OS 5 beta. So let's start with one of my favorite changes to Watch OS 5, and that is going to be the new podcast player. So now you finally get a podcast player in Watch OS 5. So Apple has not yet had a podcast app for the entirety of the Apple Watch. If you go over here, we can see that we have our library and you can kind of scroll through and flip through your podcast over here. I'm noticing that none of the album artwork for my podcast is currently on the Watch OS 5 beta. This is a beta, the first beta. Oh, there we go. It's actually starting to load. So you can see we got a nice little podcast artwork over here. If you tap into it, you can start playing it. Now it's gonna ask you, you know, to pick a source. I have my AirPods right here. So the podcast is streaming right now to my AirPods. As you can see, we have the podcast playback controls. You can pause, you can go back 15 seconds, skip forward 30 seconds. Um, you click this over here, it should give you a list of more podcasts. Uh, you have playback speed and that's about it. You know, very simple. You can go ahead and tap another episode. Um, it's a very simple, easy to use interface, very similar to the Apple Music app on the Apple Watch if you're already using that. So another nice change to the Apple Watch is that the Siri watch face will now support third-party apps inside of the Apple Watch. Uh, I don't actually see any of my third-party apps in here yet. I'm not sure if any of them are currently supported or if we could go in the settings and change that right now, but basically you get a nice third-party selection here if you had something, but you can kind of click into these apps. Finally, third parties can code their app so that they can actually be in the Siri watch face. That's pretty cool because this is the watch face I currently use the most. Uh, I like that it gives you the notifications for when you need to do something. If you need a if you set a reminder, it's gonna be at the top over here. If you have a timer, it's gonna be at the top. It gives you the most relevant information first. So it's really cool that Apple's finally letting third parties access that because if you're using a third party task manager like things, it would be cool if you can have it up here. Before, you only had the first party Apple Watch apps, which now you could do third party. So another thing I noticed while playing with this watch face in the Apple Watch Beta is that if you actually do the force press, if you go to customize the Siri watch face, you actually get a new option here to customize it to a gray background instead of a blue. So it's kind of a little more monochrome and you can see it's dark. You don't get that blue color as you're going through the Siri watch face anymore. So a nice little color option there for the Siri watch face that wasn't available on the previous watch OS. So with watch OS five, you know, I actually have some new workouts over here. Like you have hiking and you have a yoga workout as well. So you actually can do yoga workouts and hiking workouts in watch OS and workouts will now actually auto start. If you're in already a workout, say you're running with your Apple watch, it'll actually ask you if you want to auto start a running workout. And when you stop working out, it'll actually ask you if you wanna stop working out before you'd have to manually end and manually start your workouts. So one of the new features for iOS was group notifications. Apple didn't really mention this on stage for watchOS, but watchOS is actually getting group notifications too. So if you see, if I scroll down here, you can actually see that my Twitter notifications are actually grouped up. You can see that there's two more. And if you tap on it, you can actually see that there's multiple Twitter notifications in here. So one of the new apps announced with watchOS 5 is actually the walkie talkie app. Now, actually this was an earlier app introduced when the first Apple Watch was announced and they got rid of it for some reason between the announcement and the release. And you can actually see here when you touch on the walkie talkie, it actually still says it's coming soon. So it's not ready yet to use. You can't really test it out or do anything with it, but there is a new walkie talkie app that will allow you to talk to someone and send quick messages, but it's unfortunately not available to test just yet. So another feature that Apple didn't actually talk about on stage too much was that you can actually go into Control Center now on your Apple Watch and you can actually edit the icon arrangement. So if you can click edit over here, you can see that it starts to jiggle and you can actually move these around. So if you wanna move something to a different area, say you don't use, uh, Say you don't use ping my iPhone that much, you can move it down over here. Or if you don't use the flashlight that much, you can move that down as well. So this is a welcome addition. So now you can actually put the control center icons that you use the most on the top part of the screen and then put the control center icons that you don't use that much at the bottom and you can just edit and move those around. Now, one of the features Apple showed off on stage was actually the ability to view web content in the Apple Watch. So there's not a Safari web browser per se that you can access at any time and type in a website on the Apple Watch, but if you get a link, like say that we have one over here and you click on it, you should be able to get a web view when the page is actually loaded. So you can actually see it's loading a version of Safari on here and we're actually going into a web page on the Apple Watch, which is really, really cool. So you saw there, it'll actually tap you when it's done. 
Now, I don't know if you're gonna want to be reading a full website on your Apple Watch, but it is a nice option. This has actually happened to me a bunch of times where someone sends me a link and I wanna click on it my Apple Watch just to see what exactly it is, something short. This is a long article. You could read the entire article on your Apple Watch if you so choose, you have that option. Uh, but, you know, and there's even pictures inside the article. So yeah, you could actually read an entire web article on your Apple Watch. I'm not sure how realistic that is. Maybe if you're trying to sneak around and not let everyone know that you're on the internet. But yeah, you actually get a web browser on the Apple Watch now. So that's really, really cool. Again, you can't control it. You can't tap on this and go to another website. But if you get a link to your watch and you want to quickly glance at it or read this entire article, you now have that option. Now, unfortunately, one of the things that Apple showed off on stage was the Siri shortcuts, which is a really powerful way to automate Siri interactions and you click on something and it'll automate a bunch of things like turn on the lights, play your music. Unfortunately, that is not available on the Apple Watch just yet and it's not available on the iPhone beta as well. Another change that we have over here is actually if you swipe up into Control Center and you go to a Do Not Disturb, you can actually see that we have a couple options here now that are new. So you can put it on, you can put it on for an hour, you can put it on until tomorrow morning, or you can put it on until you leave your home. So some new options for Do Not Disturb on the Apple Watch. Another new feature is the ability to actually pick your Wi-Fi settings. So before you couldn't actually go in and pick your Wi-Fi, would have to go and connect exactly to the network that you had on your iPhone. This is kind of the same thing where I think it's only the networks that are on your iPhone because you can't, I don't see any networks that I am not on and I know there's more networks around here, but the networks that you are on with your iPhone, you can actually go ahead and pick a different network if you wanted to. So in watchOS 5, you also have a new setting, which is your website data and you can go ahead into website data and you can actually clear your website data that you get and you go on the Apple Watch. Again, like I showed off in that previous feature, you can go on websites now if someone sends you a link. So you can actually go ahead and clear your browsing data on the Apple Watch as well. Now in weather, you can actually go ahead and add cities on your Apple Watch. So you can actually go ahead and add a city, New York City. and it'll actually allow you to add cities to your weather. So one of the things I showed off at the conference was actually being able to lift your Apple Watch up and say something to the Apple Watch without having to say the words, hey Siri, but it doesn't appear like that's activate on the beta yet. You still actually have to say the words, hey Siri to activate Siri. I just can't get it to go every time I raise my wrist without saying, hey Siri, it doesn't work. So it doesn't look like that's actually included in beta one, but hopefully they add that soon. Another new feature for people who are working out is actually the ability to get a pace alert. So if you're going for like a run or something, if you're falling behind your pace during your mile, you can actually get a pace alert. So this will actually alert you when you're behind or ahead of your pace for one mile. So you can actually have an alert if you're falling behind, you need to run a little faster, or if you're, if you're actually beating your normal pace and you need to slow it down a little bit, and you can just set that alert, which is really cool. And you can actually go in here and set when you want the alert and it's actually just a nice little feature. A thing they changed in messages is actually that you get a new emoji picker when you're going through your Apple Watch. You can actually see that you get some frequently used smileys and people, animals and nature, food and drink, just a easier way to actually find the emojis you wanna use. So you can select stuff like frequently used and you get all your nice little emoji picked out and you can just go ahead and send an emoji. Just a redesigned way to send emoji. It's a lot faster and it's actually a better way to categorize the emoji if you send a lot of them on your Apple Watch. And it looks like they completely got rid of the 3D emojis on the Apple Watch. It looks like those are dead. There used to be a face emoji, a hand emoji, a heart emoji, and it looks like you can no longer send those. They were a little creepy and I really didn't get the purpose of them. Uh, I used to send them kind of ironically. They're, they were kind of funny and ironic way. Like they were kind of really bad, but uh, yeah, it doesn't look like that option's there anymore, unfortunately. So no more 3D emojis being able to send from the Apple Watch. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to my channel to see more. There's gonna be tons of new content coming out this week from WWDC, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video. Take care.